right, so let's take it one step deeper when we look at the oxygen-oxygen bond here. As we're thinking of diatomic oxygen, we have oxygen bonded to another oxygen, and we find here that it forms two bonds, so two covalent bonds between our oxygen-oxygen atom. So again, if I think of oxygen atom number one here, oxygen atom number two, if I draw in my orbital diagram for each of these, I got my 2s, my three 2p orbitals, and we find that our 2p orbital has two unpaired electrons sitting in it. Same thing if we do that for our second oxygen atom, we have our 2s and our 2p orbitals, and now we find that we have, again, two unpaired electrons. So we find here that my two bonds that are gonna form are gonna be between those two sets of orbitals that are going to form an overlap to form this bond. Uh, and so now when we're describing these bonds, we can say, according to valence bond theory, is that oxygen forms two covalent bonds and the way that we can describe this is that like bond to number one is going to be the overlap of now let's differentiate between our 2p orbitals and we can call these like 2px 2py 2pz and again just describing them whether they're on the x y or z cartesian coordinate axes and so we might find that we're going to say our first bond is going to be from the overlap of the 2py in our first oxygen atom with the 2py of our second oxygen atom. So that would be maybe our first bond that's formed. And then our second bond here that's formed between our two oxygen atoms would be what we call bond number two. And this would be from the overlap of the 2pz in our first oxygen atom with the 2pz of our second oxygen atom. So now if we look at our orbital diagrams, we find that my second oxygen atom now sees an octet because it's sharing, sharing those electrons with the other atom. Uh, and we see something likewise happening here with our other oxygen atom. Now this one gets a little tricky in trying to visualize. So let's go ahead and attempt to do this with our two oxygen atoms here. So now again, we're only gonna look at the two orbitals that do not have two electrons in them initially, right? So our, our two orbitals that have one electron in them. So if I have my first oxygen atom and I have my second oxygen atom nucleus. So again, we can think of our first pair of electrons that's shared. Again, this might be our 2py uh, coordinate that we might uh, axis that we might be looking at and again we see our same thing here with our second oxygen atom now we find that we have a pair of electrons shared by the direct overlap of these orbitals so here we notice there is a direct overlap of these atomic orbitals what we'll see here is, and we'll describe this a little bit later, we call this a sigma bond. Sigma bond is the first pair of electrons shared between two atoms, and we see it's directly between the two nuclei. So we call it in the internuclear space between those two nuclei. Now in my second pair of electrons that's going to be shared, because again, our orientation of our p orbitals is not directly towards each other now with these other ones, we will find that we have our 2pz orbital for one of my electron orbitals and then my 2pz for my other oxygen atom. Now what we notice here again is that we don't have a direct overlap of them. So what ends up happening is that these orbitals kind of bend towards each other and they form a space or a volume where my electrons can hang out and sh those electrons are now shared 
between those two atoms. Now what we observe is that my electrons are between my two atoms, not directly between the two nuclei, but kind of above and below the direct overlap that we find, which would be our sigma bond. And we call this above and below overlap of these p orbitals a pi bond. And we find that a pi bond is caused by the overlap of our atomic orbitals above and below the internuclear space. So it's not directly between them like we see with our sigma bond, but it's gonna be kind of above and below it and that forms kind of a filled in area where we might find those two electrons. Now in the worksheet accompanying this video, there are some extra practice questions looking at the overlap of HF and Cl2 and describing the atomic orbitals that form those bonds between Cl, Cl, and H and F. Why don't you go ahead and pause the videos and go ahead and work on that on your own. Now that you have a chance to look at these two, we can go ahead and visualize the bonding that forms between hydrogen and fluorine here. So we have an unoccupied space in the 1s orbital for hydrogen. So we'll find the 1s orbital of hydrogen is going to overlap with this 2p orbital of fluorine to form our covalent bond. And if we want to diagram this, we'll look at our hydrogen atom surrounded by the 1s orbital where it's got this single electron and now we have our fluorine atom that has our 2p orbital that again has one electron so we find that our, our hydrogen atom has a 1s electron our fluorine atom has the 2p electron and we see the overlap of that space to form the bond there between hydrogen and fluorine Finally, we can look at chlorine and chlorine bonded together. We notice that chlorine has electrons in these 3p and 3s subshells, meaning we're gonna see an overlap between those two specific subshells, between the 3p and 3p of the two different chlorine atoms to cause that bond to be formed and those electrons to see, be seen by both of those chlorine atoms to give both of them an octet. Now, if we wanted to visualize this between our chlorine atom one, where we have our 3p orbital, and our chlorine atom two. Now, with chlorine atom B, we again have our 3p orbital, and we find that we see those two electrons that are shared between those two atoms in the 3p orbital overlap. So hopefully this video gave us an introduction to valence bond theory, how we describe orbital overlaps, and we'll talk a lot more about this in our class time.